Okay, with that in mind, we're going to go into some basic concepts of uh, what we'll cover today. Uh, eight sections. Eight sections. We have four of them that are the aspects of structure. And those four aspects of structure are basically characters, plot, theme, genre. Those are the four aspects of structure. We all recognize them. But we also know there's a little overlap. For example, if something happens in the character's growth, well, that dulls out over time, that's sort of part of the plot because it's sequential. Um, if the uh, character has a moral dilemma they're dealing with, well, that has a touch on the theme. And of course, whatever happens in the theme is going to affect your genre and so on. So they're all really interrelated, but we see that there are places, sort of like places in the pond where dramatic things happen, where pebbles are dropped, and those areas from which the ripples flow, we can identify as character, plot, theme, genre, those four aspects of structure. So that's looking at the story. And to see them, you have to look at the story analytically. You're not going to look at it like an audience or a reader. To see those, you're not going to sit down and say, oh, here's this character. Not while you're watching it or reading it. Oh, and I see what the genre is doing now. You know, If the audience or reader has a chance to sit down and become objective enough about your work to recognize when there's an element of genre or theme or plot going on, you're already losing the battle. You have to keep them involved enough that they don't have time to think about how it's built. They just feel it's happening and they're part of it. Okay? And if you can do that, you've got them, okay? regardless of what the structure does. But afterwards, they're going to discuss it as they come out. Well, what do you like about the movie? Oh, in that scene where he did this, this, and this, they're talking about plot. Oh, I really like Darth Maul. He was the best in the whole thing. You know, instead of Mannequin Skywalker, you know, we've got Darth Maul. He's, he's living. Mannequin Skywalker is a stick figure, you know? And so we, in, in the uh, uh, episode one, so you, you look at that and you say, that's, that's exciting about that character. You're identifying a character, but you're not talking about character in the studying sense, the intellectual sense. You're coming out of the theater and talking about, oh, I like this guy, I enjoyed that thing that happened. Oh, that was an interesting point they made about life in this scene. It really moved me, that's the thing, you know, and things like that. So that's when the audience or reader will start considering it, is when it's all done, when it's all over. As an author, often the problem you have is that you're looking at it as a done deal. You know your story so well that you forget that the audience doesn't know anything about it yet. And you don't let out over time, and you lose perspective of how it's going to feel for them as you let out pieces of your story because there's both what it means when it's done and also what it feels like getting to that understanding. You can take everything in the story and dole it out many different ways, but how you dole it out will affect the way they feel about the story experience. When it's all done, they'll put it all together and tell you what they think about the story itself. Okay, so both of these have to be considered and you often lose track of the audience's flow through the story when you're worried about making sure all the pieces fit in the mosaic. Okay, you've got this two different views, the spatial view and the temporal view. Well, we have those four aspects, character, plot, theme, genre, but we also have four stages or processes or levels of storytelling. I used to call them stages of storytelling um, when we were dealing with Dramatica because it seemed like, well, here's the first stage that, that occurs, and then the second stage, and the third, and the fourth. And we can actually go through four different key stages uh, of the process of a story moving from author to audience. But when I called them stages, it was a little confusing because it seemed like this was a process that an author would follow. Those processes, I'll tell first what they are, and then I'll tell you why they really aren't stages, but they're more like levels of the <clears throat> slices of the story. The first stage of communication is called story forming. And that's where you build your underlying structure, your blueprint, your skeleton for your story, where all the nuts and bolts are hammered in, everything's set in place, and you know what your story is going to be. It's, it's the template, the outline, this is what the story is. Story form. Next one is story encoding. Stage two of communication is story encoding. And story encoding is when you turn all those raw bones, put some flesh on them, and for example, you say, oh, well, my goal is, um, you know, I have this goal of obtaining something. I want people who are out to get something. What is it? Stolen diamonds, a diploma, uh, all vying for the love of one particular person, whatever that is that they're after, that they're trying to obtain. Well, that's what the encoding is. That's, that's the, the real people, places, and events that represent the structure. Okay. So you start with, is my goal about obtaining something or is my goal about becoming something? Well, my goal is becoming a different kind of person. That's different than the goal of obtaining something, getting physical possession of something, or taking possession of something. So if I decide structurally and story forming, I'd rather have a goal of obtaining.
attaining than becoming, well then, if it's attaining, obtaining what? And when you choose what it is you're attaining, well, that is, that is encoding. That's your, the, the symbols. Looking at it like reading an ink blot, if you have a, a picture in an ink blot, and then you see what it means, the ink blot is the symbol, it's the encoding, and the meaning behind it is the structure, going from the other direction. Okay? So, this is how we originally did the dramatica, and then we went to the third stage, which was called story weaving. And story weaving, when dramatica uses the term, is talking about, well, now that we know that our story is about obtaining stolen diamonds, and that our main character is driven by hope, what is the hope? He hopes that he'll be able to um, make his uh, wife healthy again because when if he gets the money for the stolen diamonds, then you know he'll be able to save her uh, who, because she's in the um, hospital and going to die unless she can get expensive surgery. Okay, something as stupid as that. But <clears throat> now that you know what that encoding is, how do you tell the audience about it? Well, that's what story weaving is. Story weaving is how are we going to unfold this information? It's part exposition and part style. It's like how are we going to tell them? We know that our story is about a main character who has a, is driven by hope. And we know that we have a story that has a goal of obtaining something. And the thing he's uh, obtaining uh, is diamonds. And the hope that he has is saving his wife. So now we've got the story forming and the encoding. We understand that. But how do we communicate that to our audience? What are we going to say? Do we tell them up front? Do we drop a little bit of information? Do we fool them into thinking it's one thing and it turns out to be something else? How fast do we give them the information? Uh, who does it come from? Does it come in a conversation? Or does it, you know, all these kinds of decisions, that story weaving according to a dramatic its approach. And once you've done that, you sort of have a battle plan of how your, your story has to be unfolded. But you haven't actually written it yet. You've just figured it out. This is how I'm going to write it, okay? This is not necessarily the writing process. So Dramatica says, you go to this next stage of communication, which is called reception. And reception is going to be considering how the audience will interpret what you're doing. Taking the audience into consideration, uh, audience is more of a collaborator than, uh, than just a consumer. The idea is that they are going to be looking at those moving images on a screen, interpreting them as people and plants and cars and explosions. They're going to take that further and look between the lines and get the psychological meaning of what's actually happening in terms of events, then understand what that means to the message of the story, and then based on that meaning, they're going to go back and understand the structure, all in their subconscious. All in their subconscious. But that's what they'll be doing. They'll be interpreting all every step of the way. Now, every audience member or every reader of your book will interpret it in a slightly different way. But as long as the key elements come through and everyone interprets them the same, then everyone can have their own personal spin on it, and it's okay. Taking into account what your audience may expect or not expect, what your reader may know or not know, um, and choosing your words as you write so that you will have a particular effect on their reception of what you're doing, not just that you're telling them this, but how's the experience going to be when you're telling them? That's when you do your actual writing. You have to keep the audience in mind in the reception stage because that's going to determine the words you use, the phrases you use, the buzzwords they may or may not know, what needs to explain, be explained more fully or not explained at all, what their cultural assumptions are. All of this is in the back of your mind as you're writing. It's what makes you choose one word over another because you think it'll play better, in short. Okay, whatever it is, it's a book or stage play or tele teleplay or a movie, it will play better. But all those things are working underneath in your subconscious level as an author. Well, structurally that's true. Those are the stages of communication. First, there's the structure, and then between the, the author and the, and the audience, there's a structure, and it has symbols, and those symbols are arranged in a per certain way that they are, are presented, and then it's done with a particular style, okay, and in reception, and those are stages. But no author writes that way. So that's why the word stage is a little confusing, because there's stages of communication when you look at the process objectively and say, here's author, here's audience. But what, is, what, what about when you are author? looking toward audience, okay? Then you don't see these stages. You're looking through them all at the same time. And as an author, you're gonna have an idea for, oh, this is a word I've always wanted to use. I just wanted to use the word plethora. I love plethora. <laughs> I use it in conversation. Everybody says, why do you always use plethora? I don't even know what that means. And I force them to look it up. And then another word that I always use, meld. You know, a lot of people were complaining, what's meld? You know, it looks like, well, but I don't know. Simple words that a lot of people know, a lot of people don't know, okay? 
plethora means a whole mess of something, and meld means to blend together so that it's seamless, okay? So these are two of my favorite words. I've always wanted to use them in something, okay? So that is part of my inspiration. So I looked into my audience. One of the things I want to do is use this particular word. That's reception. I haven't even got a structure. I don't have any symbols. I don't have any encoding. I don't have any story weaving at all. All I've got is a word that I want to use, okay? So authors will come with these with some words that they want to use. And I'll also come with some story weaving techniques. Like I always wanted to do a, a, a twist ending on a plot or something, or I always wanted to come up with, and, and that's a new story weaving. And at the same time, you'll say, well, I have the subject matter I've always wanted to deal with, and, and you're excited about that. That's encoding. And structure, the closest thing to you, according to the four stages, the closest thing to the author's finished product, is not the thing you're going to think of first. Structure is almost the last thing you do. Very often, you work from the backside forward, or you can go in any order in between. Or you can have, when you come with a story idea, you may have a little bit of reception, a little bit of story weaving, a little bit of encoding, a little bit of structure. You've got all these things mixed up, but none of them is complete, and you certainly didn't do them in order. So that's why I prefer to look at them as levels of a story rather than stages of communication between an author and an audience. If you look at the finished work and you say what's in it, structurally there's character, plot, theme, genre. Storytelling-wise, there are elements of reception, elements of, of uh, story weaving, elements of encoding, and elements of the story form or structuring. All those things are mixed up. So if you look at it more as just you know, aspects of the structure itself and in the finished work, things other than structure, uh, you might say the story form is where you find character, plot, theme, and genre, except I will actually use this whiteboard. If you look at character, plot, theme, and genre over here, and you'll get story forming, story encoding, story weaving, and reception over here, you'll find that characters have to have structure, and they have to be symbolized into real people. And they have to be presented in a certain way, introduced and, and exposed to the audience that we learn things about them. And you have to be concerned about what the audience reception is. For example, if you're using a, an actor who's typecast, or if you're doing a sequel to something, you really have to be concerned about reception, because they're coming to it, the audience over here, and the author up here, okay, the audience is coming to it with preconceptions already about maybe even certain kinds of people. Even if they've ever seen your story or your character, they might have a feeling for a certain kind of person that your character is, and so reception is important. Similarly, plot has a structural element. It has the real events that actually occur in your story, that actually take place. It has how you're going to unfold information about what's going on and what happened and how things are connected. And it has to have an aspect of audience reception as to their favored kinds in our culture, in every culture, has favored kinds of expression, favored uh, means of, of uh, things happening and unfolding uh, plot-wise, and your audience will be involved there too. Theme, same thing. I won't even go through them all because we've got a lot to cover today, but you get the idea. Theme, genre, plot, character, all of them will actually go through all of these four levels. So by the time you have a finished work, it's an integrated whole. You basically have all of these elements that seem structural, but in fact, they each have a component in every stage. And every single stage has to touch on all of those structural elements. You have to have a story form that includes structural components of your character, plot, theme, genre. You have to symbolize your character, plot, theme, genre. So story encoding moves also all the way across. So rather than looking at this as stages, as it says in the syllabus, that's sort of dramatic of you, and because it still expresses it that's way, that way, it's appropriate for me to present it in class as being the way Dramatica says, okay? <laughs> Dramatica says, well, I co-created it, I know, I know, but I haven't, you know, it's sort of fixed in stone now. You can't change it. Dramatica's been around long enough, and it's like this, this you know, like this Bible, you know? Um, I was thinking of putting it at the beginning of, of the Dramatica um, uh, textbook that we came up with at 450 pages, uh, this ain't no Bible, it's just a damn book, because people kept treating it as if it was a gospel. You know, it's not. It's just, it's a theory of story, okay? Um, but if you put all those elements together, you get a, a real fabric, a real tapestry of your story, where it won't feel like something hasn't been covered in your storytelling, it'll have a full depth of storytelling and a full breadth of structure going for you at the same time, at every single point. If you're missing something, like if you you know, you're missing your encoding here, okay, in theme. What does that mean? It means you know that your story is uh, about this guy having hope that his uh, wife will, uh, will survive, but you never actually show it in your story, but other people talk about him having this hope, but you never see his hope, okay? There's a hole, okay? A hole at this level is almost always fatal because it's so basic, so foundational, so 
uh, important on both the passionate and the, the uh, structural side that if there's a hole here where you just don't have cross section of any of these, that's going to be uh, like missing a brick in the foundation of your building. And the whole thing will tend to pull people out of it, will tend to crumble down, and your, your audience or reader will stop being involved as soon as they trip over this hole. Is that like the attic where you plant a gun somewhere in the first act, then you better do something with it in the second? Yeah, sort of like if you need a gun in the second act, you better plant it in the first. <laughs> it's more like that. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I always wanted to do something with a shrubbery and, and then, um, you know, have it turn out that the shrubbery turns out to be really important later on, and then one of the characters says to the other one, no, that's an obvious plan. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just a personal thing. I want to see. Now that's that's reception. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> of course, um, and like he says in uh, Jurassic Park, that that's chaos. No. <laughs> that's reception. You know. Okay. All right. So we have an idea then of these things we'll be covering today. We're going to cover each one of these stages or levels. We're going to cover each one of these aspects, and that's the extent of the first day.